This is one of 10 movie theaters in the entire world showing Ryan Coogler's new film Sinners in 70mm IMAX film and today I'm taking a behind the scenes look with the lead projectionist. What I'm, who, who I'm I? Patrick Caldwell, been doing it about 50 years and I'm a projectionist amongst other things. I started many years ago back when it was a union job spent about 20 years affiliated with IMAX as a technician. I serviced uh, the film equipment and also serviced the digital equipment that they make, both the uh, xenon-based and the laser. So I've seen quite a progression of technology from carbon arc flames in a box to make the light for the screen because at one time, there were no light bulbs to light up the screen. So basically they used a welder's arc and uh, you could, uh, at the drive-in theater, they give me the old hot dogs before they close, and I could put them in the lamp house, and while the reel was running and the flames were going, uh, I'd heat the hot dogs up very nice, so I always had warm food. It made a noise. I panicked for a moment. That's what I do. That's who I am. film is a lot bigger than the stuff they use in regular movie theaters. It's twice as wide. Regular movie theaters ran the film vertically. IMAX runs it horizontally. And because of that, the frames on it are very large, almost the size of a playing card. On 35 millimeter, they were the size of a stamp. So if you blow up what is already a very large image, onto a screen, the image has a greater quality to it uh, than you would ha have with 35 millimeter. Uh, that's the big special thing, and it uh, moves film completely different. When IMAX started, they had to reinvent the film business for this. They had to build their own cameras, their own projectors. So how does all this work? How do, how do you get the movie to the projector and then back here? Uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the old eight track tape drives that you had in cars, but they fed from the center, passed through the magnetic heads and then wrapped up around the outside. It was a very long continuous loop. And we have done something similar here. The entire movie was up here. We start with the beginning in the center, this is the end of the movie. So we thread the beginning of the film in the center to the projector, comes out of the projector, and then it wraps up on a gray take-up ring. So when the projector starts, everything starts moving, and this silver, we call it a brain, now that's the slang for it, it's actually a payout assembly, detects if the disc needs to be sped up or slowed down to keep a constant velocity of film to and from the projector. 16 millimeter film travels a foot a second. 35 millimeter travels 18 inches a second, 90 feet a minute. This stuff moves at 337 and a half feet a minute. So it's really spinning real fast. When the movie first starts, these discs spin at 60 RPM, and they weigh maybe 700 pounds, so you don't want that going anywhere. You want it to stay where it is. So that's what these orange guards are for. There's eight of them around the perimeter. If anything happens, they will contain the film and uh, keep it from falling off the disc, which has happened. It's a mess, but you can actually recover from it. It takes a few hours, but uh, this is manufactured by Kinetone, a company in Germany, and they modified their equipment to meet the needs of IMAX. The whole system, how much electricity? Measured in watts, probably about 8,000 watts an hour. So that'd be eight kilowatts an hour and go ahead and multiply that by your local rate and you'll see how much it costs to run this for, a, for an hour. Here we go. It's going to get exciting here in a minute. Now, everything happens automatically. 
and hopefully it'll stop in the right place. Eventually it stops, trust me. There it goes. Those rollers are sticky rollers. We call them PTRs, particle transfer rollers. And they help keep the film clean. They, uh, any dirt sticks on that before it goes in the projector. Now I gotta wind the film up. Print number 11 right there. There's always an extra print made at the beginning. Sometimes they call it print zero. Most of the time they call it print one and it's called an answer print. And that's the first print that is made after they have got it edited where they want it and the audio is the first completed version of a movie. And if everybody is agreeable to that, then they take that answer print and from it, or it's master, it gets kind of complicated, but. If the answer print is good, they start making projection prints. And do they strike the projection print from the answer print or from the original negative? Okay. Oppenheimer, they exposed the film on the set, developed the film, edited the negatives, and from the edited camera negatives struck prints. So it had the fewest intermediate steps and made the best possible print that could be made. And let me tell you what, Oppenheimer was one of the sharpest movies I've ever seen. I liked the Metreon Theater in San Francisco. I used to do a little work there, getting ready for big movies. And uh, the booth has a shower in it. I just accept that for what it is, but uh, I think that's because it was a union booth and they wanted a shower, I guess. Ladder, ladder coming through. Sorry. To get a little loud. Sort of loud. Now we thread it.
each disc has to be able to feed or take up to either projector. So that's why it's got so many rollers. You don't use them all at once, but you have to be able to have as many rollers to be able to feed and take up from every disc. So a lot of rollers. Check everything, make sure every rotor is correct. That's good. We close this. Now I've got to push it forward. There's a hump. There we go. have to make a change to a uh, show file. I don't like where the lights are coming up at one place, so uh, I'm gonna do it a little different. Uh, that's not right. Oh, eight, oh one. That's correct. I got the sound ready. Got it where I want it. Now, on the leader, the, the countdown leader, 876, the clock, the very first frame says picture start. We want that frame right in front of the lens. That will be eight seconds, I call it in the hole, a negative eight seconds. I'll cue the audio for that same negative eight seconds down to the frame, 192 frames. And then I'll electrically lock the two together so that when the projector begins turning, the sound will follow it and it will actually display the projector time and the audio time and hopefully, hopefully, both of those numbers will be the same. If they're the same, that means everything's in sync. So now let's load picture start automatically, of course. And you'll be able to see picture start when it comes along. All sorts of interesting things on the front of a film. Sympathy Universal Leader. Head, real one. And that silver piece of tape is what tells the projector, hey, stop here. And here is picture start. There it is. That's it. We're ready for the next show. Uh, well, they've got the house lights down, so that means they've got uh, the auditorium clean. We will do our part and turn the lights out because we don't want to blind our patrons before they get blinded by the blood. Whoo! What a what a movie! It's great. And that is how you prepare an IMAX film projector. IMAX uh, is perhaps, it is, no perhaps about it, it is the most complex film projection system to ever be made and the most complex to operate. You gotta have a lot of knowledge. Uh, you have to be able to convert frame counts into times with minutes and seconds and one way you cue lighting is one computer uh, projector functions in another computer. This uses time code and this uses frame count. So you have two different things. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. But I love it. Wouldn't do anything else. Even the splicer for IMAX is different. To make a splice, we'll put the two ends together and we'll make sure they're nice and flat and stretch the tape across, making sure there's no bubbles. Bubbles are bad. Flat tape is good. All right. That trims the tape and punches the holes by that lever there. So we put the tape 
on the other side. Place the tape across, nice flat tape. Trim it, pull it out, and you can hardly see it. If you look real carefully, it cuts in a zigzag cut. It's not a straight cut, but it cuts zigzag. Why does it cut zigzag? The film is 70 millimeters tall. If you cut that straight and put tape over it to join it, that tape is contacting 70 millimeters of surface on either side. But if you cut it with a zigzag, now instead of 70 millimeters of tape, now you're covering about 120 millimeters. So it's a safer join. It's certainly more reliable join. And that'll go through a projector at 336 and a half feet a minute. 24 frames a second. 24 frames a second. That part never changes. <laughs>